Hello, welcome to Computer Tech and More. I think about a great one. We're going to be taking a look at the Jungle Leopard V2RS. It is a daisy chaining type fan, and before we get into it, I'd like to thank iCooler and Jungle Leopard for being awesome and sending me this fan as a review sample. No money exchanged hands, and this video is sponsored by me and this channel. So let's hop into it and s s learn about this fan. Here's some basic specs about it hydrodynamic bearing, standard 25mm thickness, 1850 RPM, it's CFM, static pressure and it's got a two-year warranty. All right, this is the way the Interstellar V2SR looks. One of these is forward spinning, the other is reverse blade. So when they're spinning like this, you can't tell the difference. But I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it temporarily so that you can go ahead and take a look. So that's the way it, well, physically looks. Uh, one note about this fan is I found that the uh, frame of it to be extra large. Uh, the whole spacing is spot on. It's perfect. It's a standard distance. But just the frame, the way it extends out, um, doesn't fit in uh, like my Noctua uh, 120 to 140 adapter uh, very well, actually, at all. Uh, so if your case is particularly compact in certain dimensions, these may have a hard time fitting, uh, just as a general note with regard to that. Uh, in terms of its physical appearance, it has infinity mirrors. They look pretty sharp. Basic illumination around the edges, so it gives a little bit more of a subtle look. So, you know, you got the reverse blade option, you got the regular option. Obviously, I don't have the RGB turned on, but that way you can pick it and pick the version that suits the application in your computer case before you're going to place it. And we'll need to look at the performance numbers to know uh, how much performance, if any, is lost going from reverse blade to regular blade, or if the reverse blade is actually higher performance, because you never know sometimes. Um, the blade looks size looks a little bit on the small side. Uh, again, the frame is seems oversized. The gap is average. Um, definitely not very tight uh, with regard to that. The blade design is kind of a I don't know. It looks more pressure oriented to me because they have a good amount of overlap, but the uh, distance between each of the blades is pretty wide. So definitely more of a pressure application. A uh, cool feature about these fans. Before I forget to mention it, so they have this interlocking feature. If I can get the original one off. Here, it uses these pogo pins, right? And there's a slot on this side. So I can slot these two together and boom, we got illumination. Now you'd never set up this with a first blade with a regular blade. Well, there might be a circumstance for it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But the RGB comes through and if the fans are spinning, it would transmit the PWM fan signal as well. So it's nice and easy and uh, should be fairly cheap to implement, which kind of is the story with these fans where it's more of a budget-oriented uh, type fan, and hopefully we'll see that with the value proposition later on in this video. The first thing to test are the case simulation, where I look at it as though this is going into an air-cooled type system, so think something as an air cooler, not an AIO, or fans blowing up towards your air-cooled GPU if you're putting it in the bottom of the case, depending on the circumstance that we're going to take a look at, which I'm going to explain right now. So again, this is all assuming a front-to-back airflow with an air cooler um, because you want maximum airspeed to get to that air cooler so it operates as efficiently as possible. For AIOs, this isn't as applicable and you'll want to pay attention to the cooler section. So the first data point is the six inch mark and that is either a short throw distance from the fans to that cooler up here in my little computer case picture or putting fans at the bottom of your computer case blowing up towards your GPU, that'd be that six inch mark. If you're looking at uh, compact towers, think something along the lines of a media centered PC type case, fitting 220s in it, roughly. Uh, you're going to pay attention to the 9-inch mark. If you're getting standard mid-towers, think something that can hold a standard 360 AO, but not anything larger. You're going to be looking at the 11-inch mark. And if you're looking at truly large towers, you're probably going to be looking at something that can hold 340 millimeter fans or a 420 AIO, and that's the 14.5-inch mark. To compare against, I have the control fan, which is three parts A12X25 original to one part A14, creating a blended 130 millimeter class fan. On here, I have the regular edition and the reverse of this exact same fan, the VS uh, RS, because I have both versions. And it's pretty clear that the reverse and the regular have very similar airflows, which is good. They share the exact same blade design, just whether it's forward or backwards. But what's interesting is in shorter cases, the regular appears to be slightly better than the reverse, but as the case gets larger, they basically even out. So I run it through three passes and average out the data, and this is what it came out to, but you could, there's enough uh, randomness in the data that 
I would call them near equivalent, even though the uh, reverse appears to be slightly more effective at the 9 and the 11 inch mark. At 100% PWM fan signal, they do differentiate themselves. Still, the control fan is significantly better, but here the reverse fan is significantly outperforming the regular fan, indicating that the reverse design is just overall better in case airflow. It must focus the airflow uh, better, and so that's why it does a better job. But how does it compare against other fans? Well, here I have a cross sub selection of fans of both very good and, well, uh, not as good fans. The Interstellars are towards the bottom of the graphs. They are far cry away from my top tier fans. So unless you really like the RGB lights on it, I would recommend getting a better fan um, just for that extra airflow performance. I would call it sufficient at this point, but I'll have a TRD, TLDR at the end that uh, you can observe. In a bar graph form, I'm going to just keep moving on. And now we're taking a look at the 17.5 noise normalized decibel rating. And the interstellars are still well towards the bottom of the graphs. Um, it's pretty clear that the reverse is overall better than the regular, not by a lot, but at the 9 and the 11 inch marks. But they are far, again, far cry away from the better fans in noise normalized results. You shouldn't be running your case fans at 100% noisy uh, computer case, but we're going to get to 100% here in a second, which is right now. And at 100% PWM fan signal, they're still towards the bottom. Even though some of these fans don't really spin much faster than them, they are still towards the bottom of the graphs. Like the P12 is on here, and it does quite a bit better than it. Almost a half meter per second more of airflow, which is uh, actually a pretty significant amount. If we're talking like 0.1, it's not that much difference, and that's almost random variation in test to test. But once you're hitting 0.5 plus, that's pretty much guaranteed. It ha also has to do with the accuracy of the anemometer. Maybe I'm over explaining. Uh, bar graph form, same thing. Oh, bar graph form. This time for locking in specific RPMs, the 800 RPM, the interstellar is well towards the bottom, meaning that its blade design is not particularly efficient at moving air inside of a computer case. Moving up to 1,500 RPM, it is once again averaged out to be at the bottom. This average is based on the 6, the 11, and the 14.5 inch marks. Now we're taking a look at airspeed vertical versus decibels horizontal uh, for that noise efficiency, basically, across its entire spec or sweep of PWM fan signal. And the jungle leopard is at the bottom. It is the least efficient at the 9 inch mark compared to this sub-sample selection of fans. Uh, they are not all my best fans. I tried to pick ones that were fairly representative of what I would consider very good to medium to not as great fans and one that was completely terrible. And this time, the same thing, the same data, except this time calculated in Sone. Sone is just a different way of taking a look at noise data. It's on my channel where I talk about uh, decibels versus Sone. So if you want to learn more, it's there. And it doesn't change anything. Now we're looking at performance to my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A is a fairly thick uh, air cooler. And we're measuring airspeed versus RPM here on the left graph. So this is a blade efficiency. It's how good is this blade design at shoving air through a cooler? And the regular version of the Interstellar is a little bit better until you reach higher RPMs than the reverse blade, where the reverse blade appears to be slightly better. And they're both very similar to my control fan. However, once we start taking a look at noise efficiency, well, at low RPMs, they're very similar uh, compared to the control fan. But as the RPM increases, uh, RPM air increases, and the noise in also, with respect, increases, they drop away from my control fan. In particular, the reverse blade is significantly worse than the regular edition of the same fan here. And thanks to viewers like you uh, watching my videos and becoming subscribers, and becoming YouTube or Patreon members, I was able to purchase a thick uh, Nemesis radiator. And right now I don't have a custom loop, but I'm starting to generate thermal data and other tests. I'm not sure if it was rolled into this video or not. We'll see that in a second. So I'm generating, this test is generating data that is not saying that these two coolers have the same cooling potential. This is resistance to airflow. And what I am seeing is that the resistance to airflow traveling through the cooler is very similar between the Nemesis radiator 
and the Noctua U12A. The radiator actually appears to be slightly easier for air to travel through than the Noctua air cooler, because otherwise the radiator, the I'm sorry, the radiator would be lower in terms of air speed at each decibel reading than the air cooler. And I've got some preliminary um, thermal data in this test. I'm not super happy with this version of the test. I am revving it, uh, meaning I'm creating a new version of it. But unfortunately, it's just not ready yet in time for this particular video. So this is at a 150 watt heat load. The new one is going to be at 165. Um, and I split out the graphs a little bit more. So we have 100% in yellow. And red is my 17.5 noise normalized uh, data point, And the blue is the 10.5. Um, thermal data point, noise data point. So it's actually going from worse to best as you go down. So the Jungle Leopard V2 RS is actually one of the worst fans here. And if you go down towards the bottom, the A12X25 is one of the best. So it gives you some semblance. So is it adequate? Did it keep the CPU cool at this particular thermal load with my uh, Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 AIO? Uh, yes, yes it did. Is it the best at doing it? It is not. Um, and it is not the most noise efficient at doing it. So you can drop it by a couple degrees C if you uh, switch to a superior fan. Now back to airspeed traveling through the cooler. And this is at my 10.5 uh, and 17.5 decibel readings. The reverse uh, V2RS is towards the bottom uh, along with, uh, well, another jungle upper fan. And while towards the top, much better cooling potential. You have like the a 12 and the P28. And locking into specific RPMs, 800 RPM, the Jungle Leopard is well towards the bottom. Moving up to 1,500 RPM, it is still towards the bottom. So there are just better fans out there than this. Locking into 100% pitone fan signal, the V2RS is second from the worst, where the regular version is actually worse than the reverse blade. Uh, go figure, it's not normally how uh, we deserve it. Now we're taking a look at airspeed versus decibel reading. Again, that efficiency of noise versus airspeed. And the Jungle Leopard is well off the main track and towards the bottom of the graphs. So it is just not a great noise efficient fan. Same thing, this time it's zone. Pause if you want to take a closer look. Now we're taking a look at airspeed through uh, my CFM test. Unfortunately, this version of my CFM test is a little outdated and does not function properly. So I'm going to skip through it pretty quickly where the anemometer needs air to come into it either naturally, so think running with a fan over your head, or blowing air in it with the fan rotating a specific direction counterclockwise. And the fact that the Jungle Leopard spins clockwise because it's counter-rotating means that it stalls it out and so the data doesn't work properly. I have updated ones. Again, unfortunately, was not ready in time for filming of this video. So almost can be ignored because I figured it out. So now we're on to value proposition. Is this fan a good value as a case fan? Well, it is towards the bottom. It isn't the worst, but it is below average at $11 uh, for both the six and the 11 inch marks. So again, unless you really like the RGB on it, I would go for something else just because I prefer more performance, but the RGB lighting does look good and that is not taken into account in uh, the value proposition. So that is a you, the viewer, decision. CFM test, we already know. We're going to move past that as far as it goes for a CPU air cooler. Well, again, it is below average. It is below the beaten pack. So there are just better options out there. But again, if it suits your aesthetic and has the amount of airflow requirements that you need, it'll do the job. As far as TLDR, this is what we're taking a look at. So how does it do for low wattage CPUs? It's not a particularly good choice for low wattage CPUs. It just doesn't hold up particularly well. For high wattage CPUs, it's also not a particularly great choice. Uh, for small cases, it's okay. And for large cases, it is also an okay pick. In all categories, well, in air for coolers, wouldn't really recommend it. It's not going to hold up particularly well. In terms of cool computer cases, it's okay. It's It would do the job. Which brings us to the end of the video, where this is the raw data. The raw data does belong to me and my channel. If you wish to gain access to my raw data, please become a YouTube or Patreon member in my two higher tier levels. Uh, the highest tier level has access to the most robust version of the data, meaning I've got all the pretty graphs and charts built into it. 
while the other one is just the data for the next two down. Um, and it was like a hard thing to ask for to give a random person on the internet money. Um, but I hope that you all liked the video and would consider uh, helping support the small channel so that I can continue to grow and buy fans and test fans and buy better equipment because that's the moves I'm trying to make at this point. So, um, but I know it's a hard thing to ask for. So just hit and subscribe does go a long way in helping support this channel. And, you know, tell friends. Uh, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you next time here on Computer Tech and More.